Hey, Thanks. how are we? <laughs> really good, thank you. So first question I've got, I know you've been calling out a lot of people, one of them's Conor McGregor. Someone else from the UFC who you actually mates with now, Jorge Masvidal, you never know the way the fight world works at the moment. He could be potentially ste stepping into a boxing world, uh, ring in a couple of years. If that was to happen, who do you think would win? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's hard to say. I, I, uh, I've never sparred against him. Um, but obviously, he's a great striker, one of the best strikers in the world. Um, and again, that probably wouldn't happen for a couple of years. And I don't, I don't like fighting my friends, you know. <laughs> um, so probably, probably wouldn't happen. But, uh, yeah, I guess, like you said, you never know. Mm -hmm. And I know you said you don't like fighting your friends, but is there still a potential fight between you and Logan Paul? I know you teased that a couple of times. <laughs> um, it depends what day you ask us, right? Uh, I think a lot of people want to see that. I think it would be massive. But at the end of the day, our parents don't want us to do it. And I don't know if I would even want to do it. Sometimes we're mad at each other and we want to punch each other. And other times, like right now, we're perfectly getting along and supporting each other and everything. So uh, the, world, the world may never see Jake Paul versus Logan Paul. But, hey, you never know. All right, next up is Jake Bennett. Hey, Jake Bennett here with Music News and Rumors. It's good to be talking to a fellow Jake. How's it going? Yes, sir. I like that name. So your fame as going an internet good. star precedes you going into this weekend. What do you have to say to people who think you might not be ready for such a high-profile fight? Uh, tune in and see if I am or not. Find out for yourself. TrillerFightClub.com. Order that pay-per-view. Because <laughs> if you're not watching, you're the one missing out. And look, I've, uh, I've dedicated the past 18 months of my life to this. And we've been in serious training camp sparring world champions. So you're, you're going to see if I'm ready or not. I know you're here for the fight, but there's a lot of fanfare going on in Atlanta around the event. Have you seen the musical lineup and which artists are you most excited to see and maybe even meet this weekend? Um, yeah, the, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about this event is that it's more than just a fight. It's entertainment all the way around. And I'm excited for all the performances. Uh, I think I think each and every one of them brings a brings a different genre of music and uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be incredible. Um, I'm obviously a believer, um, been a believer for a while. So uh, excited to see Justin perform, and he's obviously a boxing fan, which is why I think he 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 did this. Um, and so hopefully uh, hopefully we get to kick it after. All right, and now next up is Theo Salon. Theo. So you've mentioned kind of like, you know, disproving the doubters and the haters and, uh, you know, wanting everybody to tune in and kind of see what you've been working on. Um, and, you know, we've seen comments from people, you know, like KSI saying, oh, do the world a favor and knock Jake Paul out. I'm wondering, you know, one, is that like, is all of that kind of like hate fueling you? Is that a motivating factor? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I use it all as gasoline in the gas tank to work harder every single day. And I know that going into this fight, and I know that for the past three fights I've had is everyone wants to see Jake Paul lose. And that's why I work so hard every single day and, and surround myself with the best team and take this so seriously because uh, this fight means everything. You know, losing is not an option, quite literally. Uh, it, gotcha. it, it just isn't, isn't an option in my head and it, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Uh, and I've and I've put in the work, and that's why I'm confident in my ability and confident that I will come out on top. Yeah, I feel that. And then, um, are there any like kind of comments or people in particular that you kind of have bookmarked in your mind, like, oh, I can't wait to kind of like show them wrong? No, 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 no. I think there's a long list of people that I don't I don't really keep track of it. You know, um, I, I'm excited for Dana White to lose a million dollars, but other than that you know, I'm going to prove millions and millions and millions and millions of people wrong. And <laughs> they have, like you said, motivated me to, to become the best version of myself over the past couple of years. All right. Next up is Boxing Social. James here for Boxing Social and Associates from Betfred. How are you doing, Jake? You all right? Yes, sir. Chilling, enjoying the moment, man. This is, uh, this is crazy, you know, uh, headlining a fight and my third fight um and it's massive i mean justin bieber's performing and this could be one of the biggest pay-per-view events in history so just enjoying the moment happy to be here 
I've got a couple of questions for you. Jake, this boxing path that you're on right now, there's this expectation from the fans who are watching this for you to eventually fight care sites in the comments, it's in the socials, uh, they'll type for you to fight care site. Like, have you had any contact with care site in the lead to this fight? And do you think he still wants to fight you? Uh, I don't really want to talk about him anymore. Okay. Um, and with that said, like, as you delve deeper into the fight game, um, you've been training from the, from the first time you put on the gloves to now. Uh, there are levels in the sport. You've got your domestic, international, uh, world-class, elite. What level do you see yourself at now? And what level do you think people see you as? Um, I, I see myself as an elite fighter right now. Uh, a young a young prospect with a lot of uh, a lot of motivation a lot of hunger uh, and i think people see me as <laughs> a shitty amateur <laughs> uh so th there's a sort of a big difference and uh th there's a big gap in between where i'm actually at and what the general audience will think uh but i'm excited again to show my ability on saturday uh, against Ben, who is a world-class fighter. All right, next up is Jeremy Harigis. Jeremy? You were kind of talking about how, how people interpret you as, as a boxer, but the odds actually have you as the favorite right now. Do you think that's a testament that people are seeing and, and seeing your boxing talent and, and taking it as legitimate? Yeah, yeah. I mean, someone asked me this yesterday. They were like, how is the guy who's 19 and 2 uh, an Olympic athlete, a two-time NCAA champion. How is he the the proposed underdog? Uh, so it, it it is pretty funny that in my third pro fight, I'm coming in as the favorite against this guy who they're calling world class. But then the people want to say, "Oh, I'm not a fighter." I think people need to sort of make up make up their minds. But I uh, I've been putting in the work, and I think people can can see that. And looking at this from a strategic standpoint. Um, you have uh, several inches on him in height, reach, and weight. Um, how big of a factor is that going to be going into this fight? I think it'll be massive. You know, Ben's not used to fighting at this weight, and that's another thing that people aren't even talking about. They talk about his cardio being so good, but he's lugging around an extra 25 pounds um, coming out of retirement. Um, I'm ready to go into, into deep waters. Um, he's used to fighting guys his same height. Uh, Masvidal, you know, I, I'm, I've been training with Masvidal a bit and it's like, I'm towering over Masvidal. That's the, that, that's the type of guys that Ben is used to fighting. And people always say when they meet me, they're like, damn, you're big. You're bigger than I thought all the time. Um, and so that'll, that'll play a huge factor. And, uh, he, he won't be able to get close to me. He won't be able to do all the things that he's planning on doing. He, he's talking about coming in with defense and, and pressure that pressure and him coming forward is going to get him knocked out. All right. Next up is Gabriel Gonzalez. Gabriel. Hey, Jake. Um, there's been so much with the pre-fight and everything. I'm wondering, in your opinion, what is people's biggest misconception about you? Uh, everything. <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> uh, people don't understand me. They don't. They don't get me, uh, and I, I, I don't think they maybe ever will. I have a tattoo on the back of my neck that says, I wish I could explain, because I wish I could explain. <laughs> if, if I could talk to you guys for hours on hours and become your friend, you would, uh, you would maybe start to understand me, and my inner circle understands me, and my, the closest people around me understand me, my family understands me, and they get what I'm trying to do, but the world doesn't know who Jake Paul is, um, and, and maybe, I, maybe, I, maybe I like it that way. What you know, I think you've done a great job of getting people to tune in, right? You've done that with your performances, but also just the way you know, you've promoted these fights. What is your biggest advice? Because obviously a lot of these prize fighters want to do the same thing. They want more attention to make more money. What, in your opinion, is the key to it? Is it playing into the heel role? Is it having personality? What is it? I think just, yeah, being yourself. Look, I, I mean, it's hard to give someone advice on such a intricate subject. Uh, I spent... 10, 12 years of my life doing social media and marketing and creating content. So it comes second nature to me. I've been doing it since I was 10 years old. Uh, so 
I don't know, just maybe hire a social media team and uh, put some content out and grow your brand. I mean, Ryan Garcia does a great job of it. That's that's really it. That's, he's the only boxer that does a good job. All right, next up is Michael Mariam. Michael. Um, so have you had a chance to take a step back and realize how far you've come in your boxing career so quickly? Um, just like a couple of years ago, you were just doing daily vlogs and stuff, and now you're fighting in one of the biggest stadiums in America. Have you just had a chance to step back and make it all in? I honestly haven't. I think, you know, my, my team helps me reflect on, on sort of where I've gotten to and how far I've come. But um, I've just been going nonstop and haven't really had a chance to, to look back and be like, wow, that was that's crazy or this is crazy. It's, I think it's starting to set in a little bit. Um, but it, it is it is pretty absurd. Uh, I'm in my third pro fight, uh, fighting eight rounds. Uh, headlining, uh, you know, one of the biggest pay-per-views that c could happen this decade. Uh, you know, if you look at Floyd Mayweather, his third fight was six rounds. He got paid $7,000. And I don't think anyone in this room probably watched it. All right. Next up is Damon Martin. Hey, Jake. Uh, you know, obviously you've said numerous times how seriously you're taking your boxing career uh, but obviously this is the first, you know, professional fighter you face. Now, of course, there's going to be people who will say, well, Jay, you know, Ben is a, is a wrestler, not a boxer, but do you believe beating Ben Ashton will add some legitimacy to your, to your boxing career? Or does that even matter to you? It, well, it doesn't matter to me, but also I think people are going to make tons of excuses for him afterwards, which is great. You know, the, just like, again, I, I bring up Floyd, but, uh, Floyd's 50 and 0 and people still will debate why he shouldn't be 50 and 0 and the judges and da 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 and he shouldn't have won this fight and he shouldn't have won that fight and he picked the easy fight here so people are always going to have excuses as part of this game but again that's why they're going to tune into the next pay-per-view after I watch Ben to see me lose or try to see me lose uh, so uh, it doesn't it doesn't really matter to me at all and yes Ben is the first professional fighter I've faced in a real fight, but I've sparred against 250 guys uh, in the gym who are a lot better than Ben. In terms of your long-term goals, Jake, what are your long-term goals? Because, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong if you went out there and fought in uh, a million fights against Nate Robinson's and made millions of dollars. I think people forget this is called prize fighting, but what are your long-term goals in this sport? I want to continue to challenge myself with my opponents and continue to, to build up my level of competition and to make history with historic events um, and break pay-per-view records and fight big, big names and just have fun, man. Like, uh, this, is, this is such a fun sport. Uh, this is such a fun time. And this, these events are so cool, and I want to bring more eyeballs uh, just in general. Next up with a follow-up is Joe Lee. Oh yeah, um, just another one from me. I know you mentioned on the True Geordie podcast a couple of days ago about how specifically the UK fans have quite a disliking to you. Do you think you need to beat KSI in order to get more respect? Or do you think a win on Saturday night, a lot more people can reason with you because of the hard work and the passion you've shown for the sport of boxing? Uh, I'm not talking about that guy. Fair enough. Could I ask one more then? Um, what's your road to Conor McGregor? I know he's, I guess he's the ultimate goal for you. How would you map out a road if, if from now to here, to there, how, how would you get there? Uh, I think we, I think we both are on a road to each other. You know, he wants another boxing fight. He wants to fight Manny Pacquiao. He would get uh, toasted. <laughs> you know, he just keeps on taking L's. So uh, I think... Him fighting me would not only be his money fight, but it would technically be the easiest challenge, right? I think fighting Jake Paul would probably be easier than fighting Manny Pacquiao, and it would just it would be just as big. Um, and I think we're a lot closer to a Jake Paul Conor McGregor fight than anyone anyone thinks. I think it could happen in, in the next twenty four months. All right. Next up, follow up is Shaquille Majori. Hey, Jake. Thank you for the time. Just one question for me. Ben Askren was here earlier, obviously, speaking to us, and he said that he was carrying the lion's share of the promotion and that you weren't really doing your part. Can you just sort of respond to that? Do you think you've put in at least 50% of the effort for promoting this fight? Uh, so this guy has 21 fights, right? And all of a sudden, this is the biggest payday of his career. And there's a reason for that. Um, you know, Ben Askren had his dick in his hand in Wisconsin, not doing shit. I brought him out of retirement, revived his career. 
Um, and so I, I think it's, I think it's hilarious that, that he thinks that, um, you know, he's under these bright lights in front of all of you because of me, I could have picked anybody, anybody to be in Ben Askren's position. Um, and everyone that I fight becomes a, a, a global superstar for 15 minutes. <laughs> then I knock them out and no one ever talks about them again. So, uh, yeah, Ben Askren can think what he wants. Uh, he's got about 48 hours left until no one talks about him anymore. And next up is uh, Theo Salon with a follow. You know, you mentioned, um, you know, wanting to challenge yourself, but also have fun. And I know that, you know, you've got your eyes set on guys like Conor McGregor. Um, but, you know, are there any kind of like, you know, more fun kind of influencers that you are interested in fighting moving forward, you know, like guys on Twitch um, or even like, you know, TikTok or YouTube streamers, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a company right now that wants to pay me an absurdly large amount of money to fight an influencer. Uh, so I, I'll gladly go knock out these guys <laughs> for money. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've developed a skill now, right. And that skill is fighting. And if someone wants to pay to see my skill and use my name, which is one of the biggest names in, in combat sports right now, then uh, I'll gladly pick up the bag. All right. Next up is Dona Corby. Hey, Jake. Um, I want to ask you about last Friday, your final sparring session uh, ahead of this fight. You were in there with Charlie uh, Decker, who's a 3-0 and pro, <laughs> and the great Anthony Pretty Boy Taylor, uh, a, a, a famous internet troll, a guy in the MMA community who is uh, is divisive. Can you talk to me a bit about uh, about your, your final sparring session with the great Pretty Boy? Um, yeah, it was it was good. You know, uh, like I said, these guys are all better than Ben. Uh, you know, I think I think he is doing some was doing some interviews after the sparring session and was like. It was good and he was better than I expected and, you know, he's fast and uh, it was, it, I landed some good shots. Uh, no, no, you didn't. <laughs> uh, you, you got your ass beat, my friend. Uh, and, and all respect to you. I know, I know we're not supposed to talk about sparring as boxers, but if you're going to go out there and say, you know, it was an even sparring match, uh, when we watch back the tape, uh, it's, it's not even close, but uh of course, he's going to say that it was decent and all this stuff and, you know, protect himself. Obviously, that footage probably will never come out. Um, and it's he said, she said. But uh, I, I'm getting a lot a better. I'm getting the better of a lot of these MMA guys. Um, and it's funny to just see what they say after those sparring sessions. Uh, yourself and your brother's relationship, obviously, the public are always going to conflate you two. We saw him on The Masked Singer. They thought that he was going to be you. Um, but, you know, it seems like he's back in the mainstream after a few years, uh, you know, in, in the wilderness. Um, and you are, are paving this path in boxing. Maybe he's going to fight Floyd, maybe not. Uh, it seems like your relationship with him is as is as nicely separate now as it probably has ever been. Is that is that a, a fair assessment? <sighs> I think, I think we're yin and yang, and I think while we're both individuals at this at the same time, we're on the same team. So it's it's this really weird uh, parallel, and I think it's I think it's the rise of the Pauls 2.0. I, I mean, <laughs> who's doing it? All right, uh, Donna, thank you very much. Now back to uh, Jake Bennett. Hey, Jake. So there's going to be millions of people watching online, and it's projected to break some big pay-per-view records. But is it strange for you to be at such a massive venue like Mercedes-Benz Stadium, even though there's going to be an extremely limited crowd? Yeah, it's weird. You know, I, I wish there would be a crowd. It, you know, the, the fight energy isn't, isn't the same. Um, you know, when I knocked out Nate Robinson, the whole arena was silent, like you could hear a pin drop and it's, it's weird, you know, but obviously we're, we're making do with it. Um, and hopefully for my next fight, I, we can have, we can have an audience and make it turn. All right. And now we have boxing social. Hey Jake, a couple more questions for me. As you delve deeper into the sport, like the risk gets bigger. You, you're fighting Ben, who has real fight pedigree. I saw one of your videos. You had like a visit to the doctors, who talked about like the, the damage that you've received already. 
Are you worried about, as you take more risks, the effects you've experienced and what could come? Yes and no. You know, it's a dangerous sport. And, and that's why when people question my dedication to it, it's like I'm showing up every single day. I'm putting my, my mental health on the line. My brain is on the line. I, I, like you said, I've gone and gotten brain scans and um, have early signs of CTE. But I love this sport, and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. And <laughs> I'm, I'm a fighter. And people will see that, whether it's after Saturday night or whether – it's a year from now that they will see that I'm a fighter. Uh, you talked about dealing with things mentally. You've had to deal with stuff in the lead up, that's including a loss of someone personal to you. Do you carry that um, into the fight and are you dedicating your performance to uh, Shadow, who you lost uh, quite recently? Yeah, no, uh, 100%, man. And uh, it's, it's, it's a shock to all of us in the team and it's deeply affected us. Uh, and it's it just it's hard without them you know when you're with someone every single day and you live with them and and they're you know he was a father figure to me in many ways and had my back 24 7 and uh yeah he he's he's gone now and i've never experienced something like that before um but you know he would he would want me to go out there and knock this guy out and he predicted a first round knockout um in two minutes and 28 seconds and so uh, for some reason, I just, I think that's going to happen. And uh, man, yeah, I wish he was here. Uh, I wish, I wish he was here, but he, he will, he will be here in spirit. And um, I think a lot of the emotions will sort of hit me af after this fight. Cause I've been sort of trying to suppress it to, to stay strong. Next up is Damon Martin. Hey Jake, uh, just a couple follow-ups here. Uh, you mentioned you were kind of looking forward to, J to Dana White losing a million dollars on this fight. Obviously, you're fighting Ben Askren, a, you know, a, a UFC veteran fighter. You want to fight Conor McGregor? Do you do you have fun kind of getting the animosity with the MMA guys, or do you, or is it just like that's just the rivalries you've been building so far? Like, what is it with you and the MMA community that you're that you've been so entrenched in that? Uh, I'm just having fun, you know, and and trolling and. I've sort of purposely pivot. Uh, I've purposely <laughs> pitted the MMA community against me, uh, so they tune into this fight. Ta-da! It worked. Is that we talk about your future fights? You mentioned Connor. I mean, obviously that would be massive. Uh, but but is Connor the only guy? I mean, I know you mentioned. I think you mentioned somewhere that if Dustin Poirier beats him, you'd also be interested in that fight. Yeah, you know, Connor. Connor's the the big name, right? Uh, he, he's he's a list celebrity, and there's very few fighters who are a list celebrities. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I hope he I hope he wins against Dustin. I guess so that the fight becomes more exciting. 